Hi guys, I welcome you to my YouTube channel and today I gathered the courage to um, record another practical which has been done by my students. So like I promised, I'll be taking you to advanced practical skills. I'll just be uh, showing you how to interpret question number two, which is the most uh, simpler, the simplest and the most important question that can make you to pass if you, if you make a mistake in question number one. So remember, this is advanced uh, practical skills. This is AS Physics 9703. It is actually paper three, and this is component three three. I've chosen a paper which is October, November 2017. So as a teacher, if you're a teacher, you can download the paper and you can print for your students. You can also download the instructions, uh, the, uh, the instruct confidential instructions so that you can see the apparatus. The apparatus are very easy, just springs, uh, stands and meter ruler, which are very common apparatus in any school laboratory. So without wasting time, I would like to take you to the paper so that I try to show you how my students, how I guided my students through this paper. Okay. So this is the paper, Advanced, Structure, Advanced Practical Skills, October, November 2017. And we are strictly going to question number two. So uh, my students did this practical today, and I think today is 20, 20, um Today is 25th of um, September 2023. My students did this practical today, 25th of, of September 2023. So this is how the setup looks like. I'm not going into the details of the questions. You can always read them. But they were investigating the equilibrium of a meter supported by springs. The setup was like that. So um, adjust the position of the bosses until the meter rule is parallel to the bench. There's a limitation here. It is difficult to judge that the meter rule is parallel. So how do we improve that? So there's a limitation there. The loops of the string supporting the rule should be vertical and as close to the ends, as close to the ends uh, as possible. Now, if we say as close to the ends, a meter rule is 100 centimeters. So when we say as close to the ends as possible, it means the distance between the loops should be greater than, the distance C should be greater than 95 centimeters. Because you can't say 94, uh, 94 cannot be as close as possible to the ends. So 95 centimeters, that it could be the distance between C, I mean between the loops. So C should be greater than 95 centimeters. So if you're a teacher setting up this practical, do not allow students to have results or values for C less than 95 centimeters because the instruction says as close to the ends as as close to the ends of the ruler as possible. So my student, the one I'm using, because this is just reading a measurement from where the loop touches the ruler and from where the loop touches the ruler on the other side, we can't repeat this measurement. So this is a single measurement. So my student uh, got 95, 98. 0.0 centimeters. Now measurements from a meter ruler should be recorded to one decimal place. Remember that in centimeters, one decimal place in centimeters for every measurement from a meter ruler. Suspend a mass of 0.1 kilogram from the top from the loop of a string as shown. Okay, the distance between the string loop below both A and the string loop supporting the mass is X. So they have showed you in the diagram, move the mass so that the, that X is approximately 80 centimeters. So a value of X should be approximately 80 centimeters. So it means it should be around 80 centimeters, around 80 centimeters. So you adjust X to be about 80 centimeters. Then uh, of the lengths of the coiled sections of the springs are Y and Z. So if we are to hold a ruler to measure Y and Z, there is a limitation here. First of all, your hands cannot be still when measuring Y or Z. You are holding the ruler in your hands to measure Y or Z. Your hands cannot be still. So there is a limitation there. There is also parallax error when you are holding the ruler close to the spring. You could also knock. You could also knock, easily knock the spring as you bring as you bring the ruler close to measure the length z or x. So that is a uh, limitation there. Okay. So uh, record 
m m was given so i just to transfer it to 0 0.100 0 0, so i may i will maintain the same number of significant figures do not why they can change the number of significant figures so that is 0 0.100 then measure and record x because x is just read from the ruler since the string loop touches the ruler on the other point and the other point x is a single measurement we don't repeat it so my student measured x and her value of x is 79.8 centimeters remember every measurement from a meter ruler to one decimal place then measure and record y because Y involved holding a ruler in your hands and Z also involved holding a ruler in, my, in your hands, there is parallax, there is shaking, the hand cannot be very still. Every time you bring the ruler close to the, to the spring, you knock it. So a repeated measurement would be fine for this measurement. So this is what my student did. My student drew a small table here to, re to show a repeated measurement for, for Y and a repeated measurement for Z. So I'll draw a table. You don't need to include many columns because like I said, the examiner is not interested in your answer. The examiner will be so much interested in the method. So the method is that you repeated the measurement because you noticed that when you are holding a ruler, the value in your hands and measuring something in space, the value may not be really very accurate or very appreciable. So for Y, my student go to the first value of Y in centimeters and the second attempt in centimeters. So for the first attempt, she has 5.2. For the second attempt, she has 5.1. So to find the average, so y is equal to 5.2 plus 5.1 divided by 2. And of course, when you round off to one decimal place to maintain the same uh, uh, precision, 5.2 plus 5.1 divided by 2. This gives you 5.15, which when you round off to one decimal place is 5.2. So my student recorded 5.2 centimeters. For Y, then for Z, uh, she also took two measurements, Z1, the first attempt in centimeters, the second attempt in centimeters, and her first attempt was 0 6.0, her second attempt is 6.1. So you can also take measurements. And uh, her average is, of course, 6.1 to one decimal place. Rounding off to one decimal place is 6.1. So this student has showed repeated values. Or maybe Z could be 6.0 plus 6.1 divided by 2, which gives her 6.1. So you can also do the practical and see which values you get. Don't expect to get this exactly the same values in this practical. But the format, the way you, you present your work should be almost the same as, this, as, as the one showed in this video. This video is just showing you how you should present your work, how you should present your practical report. So estimate the percentage uncertainty in your value of Z. So there are two ways. The most direct one is to use a half of the range. Because I have repeated measurements which are, this, which are different, I can tell the examiner that the absolute uncertainty, absolute uncertainty, how do you spell uncertainty? Absolute uncertainty is equal to half of the range, which range is going to be 6.1 minus 6.0. And uh, this gives us, um, I think that is, 0 0.1 divided by 2, which is 0 0.05, 0 0.05 in centimeters. So this student will now tell the examiner that the percentage uncertainty in Z is going to be 0 0.05 divided by the true value of Z, which is 6.1 times 100. This will be percentage. So press the calculator, 0 0.05 divided by 6.1 times 100. 
which gives us um, this will give us 0 0.8 percent or 0 0.82 percent 0 0.82 percent alternatively you could use another method remember the answers are not going to be the same the examiner will be interested in the method rather than the answer so method two The second method, now you look at the instrument. We are using, to measure Z, we use the ruler. And for a ruler, the least count is one millimeter. The smallest value is one millimeter on the ruler. That could be substitute and certainty. If the measurement is just easy to read from the, from the, if the measurement was easy. If I was measuring X, I could say the absolute in measuring X is say one millimeter. But because I'm holding a ruler to measure Y and Z in my hands, the uncertainty increases. It is actually greater than one millimeter. So for a ruler, every time you use a ruler, the absolute uncertainty in any measurement using a ruler or meter ruler is between, can be a value between two millimeters to five millimeters. You just choose a value between two millimeters to five millimeters. I'm saying I could take one millimeter if I was if I wanted the absolute in X, but they wanted the absolute in Z. Where to measure Z, you are holding your ruler in your hands, which increases the uncertainty because there is a parallax. First of all, the hand is shaking, the hand can't be still. Secondly, you can easily knock the spring when you bring the ruler very close. So that means the absolute uncertainty becomes bigger than one millimeter. That's why I'm saying you choose between uh, from two millimeters to five millimeters, and I will just choose uh, two millimeters as my absolute. So I will simply say absolute uncertainty in Z. The absolute uncertainty in Z is equal to two millimeters, which is 0 0.2 centimeters. Then I will now find the percentage uncertainty in Z as 0 0.2 divided by the true value of z which is 6.1 times 100. Remember I said these answers are not supposed to be the same. The examiner is interested in the method. The second method is suggesting the absolute uncertainty which falls in the range acceptable for the meter rule or for the ruler. So I will say 0 0.2 divided by 6.1 times 100. So this gives me three point, uh, about 3.3 percent. So this is 3.3 percent. So I could write either this answer here or I take 0 0.82 percent. I know these answers are not the same, but I'm saying the examiner is interested in the method, not the answer. So the first method could be relying on half of the range. The second method could be suggesting an absolute uncertainty which is acceptable for a meter ruler or for a ruler. And that is between a range, it's a range from 2 millimeters to 5 millimeters. Okay, calculate x minus c over 2. So remember my x is 79.8. So I will say 79.8 minus c, my value of c was 90, 98. So this is going to be uh, minus 98. Minus 98.0 divided by 2. So I check this from my calculator 79.8 minus 98 divided by 2. So this is giving me 30. 30.8, so this is giving me 30.8, so this is going to be 30.8. Okay, then uh, calculate Z minus Y over M, give an appropriate unit. So Z minus Y, so Z, remember, was 6.1, and Y is, what was my value of Y was 5.2, so I just subtract. So 6.1 minus 5.2. Divide by um, m was 0 0.100, 0 0.100. So I'll check this with my calculator. Six point one minus five point two divided by zero point. 100 
so this is giving me um, nine so but I can't write nine because the the smallest number of significant figures here is two so I'll write 9.0 this will be uh, they said give an appropriate unit so this is in centimeters this is in uh, kilograms so I'll have centimeters per kilogram okay then justify the number of significant figures that you have given for your value of z minus y over m. So note that uh, 6.1 minus 5.2 is to two significant figures. Then 0 0.100 is to three significant figures. So we have to maintain at least this, uh, the smallest degree of accuracy in the raw data. So I will say that since, since uh, z minus y, since z minus y, is to two significant figures two significant figures and we also mentioned the number of significant figures for m and m is to three they are one two three one two three the zeros which come after one in a decimal number are significant and m is to three significant figures So to maintain accuracy, to maintain the same degree of accuracy, we should write z minus y over m to at least two significant figures because the smallest is two. So we can't write to less than two significant figures, yet the smallest number of significant figures in the given data or the data we have used is two. So to maintain to maintain accuracy, To maintain accuracy, z minus y over m, z minus y over m should be to at least should be to at least at least two significant figures. significant figures so to maintain the same degree of accuracy we should ensure that z minus y over m has the smallest should be two significant figures which means it can be more than two significant figures but it can't be less than two significant figures i could also have written this as 9.00 but the moment i write 9 i lose this mark so it means I would have reduced the answer to one significant figure, yet the smallest is two. So this would be wrong. Okay. Change a mass. So the students had to change the mass. Adjust the position of the mass and the height of the boss B until the value of Y is the same. So this many students did not perform this part very well. That, that's what caused the problem with their results. They had to adjust until they went back to the same value of y. So remember y was 5.2. So this had to remain 5.2. They had to make adjustments even if the mass has changed. They had to change um, the position of the mass and they had to change the height of the boss b so that uh, the value of y was the same as before. But I'm very sure students need to do that. So for this particular student, the mass is given already 0 0.2003 three significant figures. Don't y z to change the number of significant figures. So my student measured x. X was the value between um, x was this measurement here. We are just read from the loops. And my student noted that x is 87.6. So she got 87.6 centimeters. Is it 87? No, it's not 87.
she got this as 80 yeah it is 86.7 86.7 centimeters so that is a single measurement then z z was she repeated z again because remember z involved holding the ruler in your hands while measuring so she drew a table you don't need to draw many columns it will be a wastage of time So she did this twice, Z1 in centimeters, second attempt in centimeters. Her first value was 7.4, her second value 7.2. You can try it yourself. You may not be having the same springs, but your teacher can show you are the springs which are in the confidential instructions. So then getting this average, Z is 7.4 plus 7.2 divide by 2 which makes z to be 7.3 centimeters then getting x minus c over 2 uh, the second value of x is 86.7 so she got 86.7 minus c remember c was 98 so 98 of course 0 0.0 over 2 then pressing the calculator, 86.7 minus 98 divided by 2. And she got 37.7. .7. So this is 37.7 centimeters. Then her Z minus Y over M. Remember Z is 7.3 minus y which y is remember y was fixed 5.2 divided by m which is 0 0.2 so 7.3 minus uh, 5.2 divided by 0 0.2 which gives 10.5 so her value here is 10.5 those are the values there then uh, the next part tells, asks them to find, uh, to calculate two values of k. So she started by making k the subject. First, make k the subject, I will just divide this both sides. So k is equal to x minus c over 2 divided by z minus y over m. There's no need of me uh, breaking this because I've already calculated x minus c over 2. And I've already calculated z minus y over 2, so I'll just substitute k1. Her k1 value, uh, x minus c over 2. I mean, yes, what was the first value? x minus c over 2 was 30.8, and then y minus z over m was 9.0. So 30.8. Divide by 9.0. So 30.8 divided by 9.0. That is 3.4. So this is 3.442 recurring. So the first value is 3.42 recurring. Then the second value of K, uh, the second set of values, we have 37.7 divided by 10.5. So this is 37.7 divided by 10.5. 37.7 divided by 10.5. That is 3.59. 3.59. Is it recurring? Yes, 3.59 is, it is the 904761, which is recurring. So the second value of k is 3.59. You are not going to get the same values of k depending on how you perform your experiment. But as long as the method is correct. Then this particular question asks us to explain whether your results support the suggested relationship. Okay. So remember what I said. First of all, you should have, as a teacher, uh, encourage your students to choose a criterion between from 5%, 8%, they can choose 10%, a student can choose 12%, maybe at most 15%. Of course, you can't choose a bigger acceptance range. 
So your student will write a simple statement and say, let, let my percentage acceptance range, let my percentage acceptance range of error in k values b uh, let me say 10 percent i will say 10 percent this time so i've chosen 10 percent that is my criterion let my percentage acceptance range of error in k values be 10 percent that means i will only accept an error which does not go beyond 10 percent if it goes above 10 percent then it means uh, k cannot be considered constant the relationship cannot be supported so next, I'll find the percentage difference in K values. Percentage difference in K values. Percentage difference in K values. This is going to be equal to, so I will take the difference, which is 3.59 minus 3.42 divide by I can divide you can divide by the highest you can divide by the average but I will just divide by the highest to save my time so divide by 3.59 I said you can divide by the average you can divide by the highest so this is going to be times 100 to change it to percentage so what do we get here 3.59 minus 3.42 divide by 3.59 then I multiply this by uh, by a hundred so this is giving me 4.75 percent or 4.7 percent and you notice that 4.7 percent is less than 10 percent so I can say the relationship is so I'll say since since uh, the percentage difference since the percentage difference in k values in k values is less is less than 10%. Remember, I was testing against 10%. So, since the percentage difference in k value is less than 10%, if it is less than 10%, k can be considered constant. Because the percentage difference in k values is less than 10%, then k can be considered constant and thus the relationship is supported thus the relationship is supported so if you perform your practical and you have chosen 10% as your percentage acceptance range and you get this answer to be above 10 percent you just modify the conclusion and you say since the percentage difference in k value is greater than 10 percent then in that case k cannot be considered constant thus the relationship is not supported but for this particular practical for these particular results i am seeing that uh, the percentage difference is less than 10 percent so k can be considered constant Thus, the relationship is supported. I don't know whether by coincidence that all the practicals I've recorded, the relationship is already supported. Next time, I'm going to choose results of a student where the relationship is not supported. Okay, lastly, describe four sources of uncertainty or limitations of the procedure for this experiment. We have calculated two K values because there are only two sets of readings. We can start by the first limitation. Two, or they spell two. 
So two readings. Are not enough to draw a valid to draw a valid conclusion. Two readings are not enough to draw a valid conclusion, and how do we solve this? Take more readings. Take more readings and plot a graph. Alternatively, you can take more readings, take more readings, obtain more k-values and compare them. So if you take more readings and obtain more k-values, then look at them and see, are they very close to each other? Are they very close to each other? Are they very precise? Then if they are very close to each other, then you can still say, um, you can now make a valid conclusion. Number two, I expected a large percentage uncertainty depending on the, the type of other uh, springs you are using. There are, I expected a large percentage uncertainty and the difference in Z and Y. In other words, these values are the Z and Y, when you subtract them, you should have got a very small difference, which gives a large percentage uncertainty. So I expected a large percentage large percentage uncertainty in z minus y so whenever you you, you take whenever the measurement taken is very small then we expect a large percentage uncertainty so if we want to improve this to avoid a large percentage uncertainty in Z minus Y, then the difference Z minus Y should be very large. And how would we make Z minus Y very large so that we avoid the large percentage uncertainty? Then we would have used a large, a large difference between the masses. Rather than using a difference of 0.1 kilogram or 100 grams, we would use, use say, from 0.1, we could use maybe 0.3. So use larger differences use larger differences use larger differences between between masses alternatively you could use the larger x values use x values larger that would mean you need a longer ruler use larger x values you would use larger x values alternatively you could use springs with a smaller spring constant springs with a smaller spring constant stretch more when there is a smaller change in mass so use springs with a with a smaller spring constant use springs with smaller spring constant if you use a spring which has a smaller spring constant it means it is less stiff a small change in mass would cause a larger increase in extension so the difference z minus y would be large giving a smaller percentage uncertainty Okay, then uh, next we can look at, um, I think those are two, three. For the third one, you can talk about, um, it must have been difficult to judge when the rule is parallel to the bench. Difficult, I want to use one, two, three. Difficult 
I don't want to use to fold that because I may need to write like 5. Difficult to judge or to adjust the rule to be parallel to the bench. Difficult to judge when the rule is parallel. Difficult to judge when the rule is parallel to the bench. It must have been difficult to judge when the rule is parallel to the bench. That is a limitation. And this one, uh, normally we can use a spirit level. Use a spirit level to check if it is parallel. So I'll write it here, use a spirit level. You could use a spirit level to check if it's parallel. But just by just looking at the rule, it is hard to judge that it is part of the bench. Yet there was an instruction telling you to make sure that it is part of the bench. But when you use a spirit level, some of you may not have seen a spirit level. But use a sp normally it is with the builders. So it can help you to know whether something is vertical or horizontal. Spirit level it is S-P-I-R-I-T, spirit. Use a spirit level to check if it is, if it's parallel. Okay, then uh, number, f I'll add another one, a fourth one. I'll put the fourth one here. Uh, it could have been difficult to measure X on the rule because of the thickness of the string. So I will say difficult X and C because we're re reading um the points where the string loops touch the, the ruler so difficult difficult to read x or c one of them just mention one of them x also of course you can't say difficult to read x then in the next text the next uh, limitation said difficult to read the c to give to be the same thing so difficult to read x or c on the ruler owing to the thickness or due to the thickness of the string owing to a thickness of the string difficult to read x or c owing c on the ruler owing to the thickness of the string that one can be solved um, Instead of using a, a thicker string like the one we used in our practical, you could use a thinner string. So a method of improvement would be use a thinner. Use a thinner string or thread. Use a thinner string or thread. You could also use a thinner wire or thinner wire. Use a thinner string or thread, or you could use a thinner wire. And uh, the last one, um, the most important, and that one which I expected you still may have noticed is parallax error. When you are holding the ruler, the hand cannot remain still. That one contributes to parallax error. So I'll write, because I want to write a lot to explain this in more details, I'll start from here. So difficult to measure Y or Z, one of them. You don't say Y and then in the next one we say difficult to measure Z, yet you have said difficult to measure Y and you are giving the same, the same limitation. So difficult to measure Y or to measure Z on the spring, but Y, one it could be due to Parallax. Due to, you could say due to parallax. You could say it is difficult to judge where the a uh, where it is dif difficult to judge. It would have, it must have been difficult to judge uh, where the end of the coil section coil section is. 
where end of coil dissection is on the spring. You could also say, for the same, we are answering the same, we are, measure, we are explaining the same difficult, measure X, Y, or Z, one of them. You could also say it is easy to knock the spring when measuring Y and Z, or Z. It is easy to knock, I think knock is K, N, O, C, K, to knock the spring when measuring Y or Z, you don't mention, even if you don't mention both. You must have noticed that it is difficult to hold the roll still when measuring Y and Z. Difficult uh, to hold the rule. It is difficult to hold the roll still. Your hand cannot be still when you are holding an object in space. Difficult to hold the, the roll still when measuring y or z. So any form will describe the difficulty in measuring y or z. So how do we improve this? It is easier you could have to clamp the ruler instead of holding it in your hands, which, which keep shaking. So you would instead use a clamped ruler. So you could say use a clamped. You would use a clamped ruler or you would use pointers, you would put pointers on the ruler so that it's easy to read where the end of the uh, coil section is on the springs. Use pointers on the ruler or on the rule. Or you could put pointers on the springs themselves or on the spring to easily measure. Easily measure Y or to easily measure Z. Alternatively, by the way, you could use or you could use a vernier caliper instead of using a ruler to measure Y and Z. You would use a vernier caliper. It would be better than a ruler to measure Y and Z. So you would say use a vernier caliper. Use a vernier. No, normally this is in the Prolo. Use vernier calipers. Use vernier calipers instead of instead of a ruler to measure Y or Z. Okay, so these are some of, this is how you would present your work. You can just pick out, for me, I wanted to write more than four so that you have an idea about the practical. So this is how you present your work. And I think this video has been, uh, has been useful. If it has been useful, do not, do not forget to, I have recently monetized my YouTube channel. So do not forget to like the video. Do not forget to subscribe, share the videos with your friends. You can't do this without the, the document. You can't follow the videos without, uh, first of all, doing the practical, obtaining the results, and then presenting them. Okay, until next time, bye-bye.